my name is Terry from Sweet Pea Papers in the Sweet Pea Papers Facebook group. And this is video 10 in our Spring Fairy series, and this is a Sweet Pea Papers project. We're using a Victoria Design Kit Spring Fairies, but of course you can make this with any kit that you want. Um, this, I think, getting very March, April, May, it may air in April or May, I'm not really sure which, um, of 2023. Now we've come to the time where we're going to make the cover of the book and um, because we have completed both signatures and the envelope stack that's going to go on the cover, I added a wax seal to the cover with my uh, dried flower in it. Now making the cover, oops, my stool is really low, there we go, making the cover is not difficult. Um, if you just do it step by step. So we've got two 6x9, 6x9 pieces of cardboard, and it's really four, so it's two glued together. Look at that right there. I just had that problem because it was warped. It's a cereal box, and it was warped, and I thought I had held it together long enough, but I guess I didn't. So I'll keep talking while I'm waiting for this. Make sure there's no more. Okay. Um, I had the same thing on this corner. Um, and then we have a two inch spine, which is this piece right here. I've got two eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper glued together vertical. And I've drawn a line at one inch from the bottom so that I can make sure all the pieces are straight. Okay. And it doesn't matter that this is where the fold in the box was because we've glued it to this solid piece. Okay, so now I marked these top inside, top inside, because of there's a little edge on the, on the corner of one of them, this one, and so I want it to be where I fold the paper over it. Okay, otherwise I would have had to start all over with these two pieces, so I'm pretty sure it'll be fine. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start gluing the pieces onto the paper. So we're going to take our spine. Now, eight and a half is going to give us a half an inch, or it's going to give us a um, nine inches, I'm sorry. Um, and a, let me start that over, 11 inches minus nine inches is two inches, so that's going to give us an inch at the top and the bottom. You want to glue the spine on well. Um, I'm notorious for just gluing the edges of things. and um, But the spine, you want to make sure it doesn't bubble out. So we're going to glue it on all, all over. I'm just going to flip it over. I'm going to position it straight on the line in the center. We're going to paper it so it's okay. So we're going to put it right in the center. I'm going to put it straight, straight as we can, eyeballing it. Give a second for the glue to set. If it's ice cold, then the glue has not set. And I might add with the cereal box, I glued shiny side to shiny side. I think that's why some of it pulled apart. It was a little warped. Um, I used one of those giant sized uh, Cheerios boxes and it just took, it took two boxes to make it because you've got two pieces and two pieces and um, yeah, it took two boxes. So I had pieces left over to use for another small journal or another small and more spines. Okay, so now let's glue this down. Now this one technically you don't have to glue the middle. I like to be able to slide it around because it's not going to bubble up. But just to be on the safe side, that's why I'm putting these extra amounts on the corners to allow me to kind of slide it around a little bit. Um, the 
little bit of glue in the center is just to make sure that the paper sticks because I want to be able to get it all lined up. You want to leave a little bit of a gap. You can use a spacer, which is a few pieces of your cardboard glued together. You can use a spacer, but I'm just going to eyeball it. Looks like my spine is a smidge taller than my that's no good. Could have seen that before I glued it down. Yeah, and it's glued down good. That was the whole point. Well, we'll have to hope that that sixteenth of an inch is not enough to make a big difference. Well, I can cut it off if I have to once we put the book together. And then we can put lace on to cover if we have to. Yeah, it's even more so with this one. What is the deal? Looks like I'm going to have to make a new spine. Uh-huh. The glue hadn't set yet. So I can cut that little bit off. Perfect. Okay, let's re-glue it. can't believe I got that lucky. Because I put so much glue on it hadn't set yet. So I got lucky and I was able to pull it off. Worst case scenario is two more pieces of paper and take some scraps and make a new spine. So it wouldn't have been the end of the world. And I found that my, uh, as far as cutting cardboard, you can cut through two or one and a half, basically. It'll leave a line for you to go by. Layers of cereal box with your Fiskars triple track, the one that has the wire in it. And I found that that is the best one to use to... Um, cut cardboard, not your big rotary cutter. Now, some people like to use a rotary color, co a rotary cutter and a ruler, and that's perfectly, perfectly fine. Me, I'm not able to do that. I just tried and tried, and I can't get it done. The reason I'm getting this glue off is I don't want there to be any little bumps or anything in the paper. All right, let's re-glue this one. This already takes a lot of glue. <laughs> I'm glad I noticed it right away. Because the bottoms were even, you see, because I put them on that one inch line. That middle part was the part that had kind of pretty much stuck. So it's not as thick of a glue. Okay, so let's flip this over.
put it along the line. Give myself a little bit of a gap. Slide it down just a little bit. There we go. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with this other one. And you see there's that little lip right there. We're going to use um, eyelets and elastic to hold our signatures in. Um, my eyelets won't be here till tomorrow. So we're going to make the cover. Then we're going to skip putting the eyelets in. And we're going to um, make the two pieces for the inside covers because we're going to have we're not going to have just plain covers on the inside. don't want them right up against each other because they'll bump into each other and you won't be able to close your book. Okay. Let's get set up for a minute. You saw I was able to take it off because the glue hadn't set. Let's take a drink of pop while I can. Cheers. Drink them if you got them. Coffee. Okay, now we're going to trim the corners. Of the paper. And I'm just doing a rounded, just like you would see in the um, gusseted pocket. Looks like I missed glue in that corner down. Just that little teeny part. be careful because sometimes I start too far out. Throw those away. Unless you're just partial to them and want to keep them around. So we're going to take the paper and kind of do this. So it isn't a total shock to the paper that we're going to bend it. Okay. And it puts a kind of a semi crease in it. Then we put the glue along here. She says confidently. to the paper. It 
See how I do that crossover with my arms? <laughs> stand it up, bend it over, and slide it towards yourself. You hear that crackling noise? I don't know if you can hear it or not. That means you're sealing it down. And we're going to flip it over and double check. Now in this particular book, I'm planning on papering the center of the spine. We're going to paper the cover. I'm going to put some lace on. And we're going to put our envelope stack on. Now you'll notice the Fabri-Tac does show through this light colored paper a little bit where it's real thick. But that's okay because we're going to paper over that. So see we're going to have to hold this down, hold this down. Most of it stay. And you want to take your bone folder and you want to take your rounded one. Not this one really so much. And you want to kind of crease where that gap is. I find that don't use the point, you'll poke through the paper. But I find the cream colored paper when you flip it over or when you go to make the other fold once you've put the inside in. Um, difficult to see. So I try to do this pretty well. This is 65 pound cardstock. You have to be careful not to crack it. And then I take this and I go like this along the edge and it flattens it. Sorry, this is so close to the camera. Okay, now let's glue the other side. Do the long sides first. Forgot to bend this a little bit. We can still do it though. You don't really want to gl the glue to ooze out, but you want enough on there that it grabs. So now we can give it that little bit of an idea of what we have in store for it. And then just pick it up on the other side, slide it towards you. usually have you're gonna have trouble anywhere it's gonna be the corners the center let's 
Now we're going to have the top and the bottom done. And the ends are easy compared to the top and the bottom. What is jiggling over there? It's still jiggling. It's making me crazy. Try to do it slower so I'm not jiggling the table so much. It's probably jiggling the camera too now that I think about it. I apologize. You don't want to bend it yet. Let's do this in. Looks like it's going to be close on the paper on the corners. This isn't quite even right there. A lot of times the paper will cover up minor discrepancies. I'll have to see here if the paper's long enough. And I'll have to um, get the papers together for one part of it. One part of it I remembered to get the papers together for, I think. Or maybe I have them both done. worried about this not meeting at the corner. Maybe it's the other end. You want to make sure these are down securely, but you don't want glue oozing out. I bought some 32 pound paper that I'm going to try to use for the paper in my next book, um, which is actually going to come out before this one. But, um, and then cut the ephemera out in the 65. I might even start cutting ephemera out in 110 to give it a little more oomph. All right, this is what we're gonna do with you, buddy. Get ready. Oops is never a good word. There's too much glue right there. Let's see if I can smear some of it towards the inside. notice it's only right there where we put so much glue. That you can see it through there a little bit. It's like a shadow. Awesome. Now, with this this 65 pound paper, this cream paper, is just regular paper. When I use white, I use what's called a vellum finish. That's what I really like about that. That's the one thing about that 32 pound white. It um, 
Oh, I did have a problem with this corner. Darn it. I'm pushing it together to see if I can get the paper to kind of slide over there a little bit. Seems to be working. Got lots of glue coming out. Yeah, now it's a lot more minimal. Okay. Let's take this side. Be careful where your seam is. get any glue that might show once you put the papers on on the inside. Can't believe I just missed that corner, just barely. We're not going to have room to put book corners on, or I would do that. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to put the middle on the inside. to remember on these pieces to ink them. Please let me remember. Now I only want the piece to be as big as the pages are. So let's take the envelope stack. I want it to just be the green. I mean we want it to only be as tall. Because when we lay the sections in there, the signatures in there, we don't want this to be taller. We want this to be the same height. So we're going to cut it off here. just realized this has text so we want to make sure that it's going the right way. There's a little bit of a defect on the edge here so I'm going to trim that off. Alright, well instead of looking for it forever Not sure I checked for the, the text to be in. See, there's a little bit of a defect there. Sometimes that happens when you um, print borderless. It makes a little bit of a goof on the cover or the color. Here's my other line. Why is it shorter? Should be eight and a half. What a goof. I don't know what I was thinking. So 
can be eight and a half tall. So that goes to show you okay, now this is way too wide so we only need it to be and I don't want the butterflies anyway that was the whole point of making it just green so I want it to be about this wide This is going to end up being a scrap. So now we're going to ink it. So we've got about an inch and a half on either side. going to label this top. And the reason I'm going to do that is because the um, text goes this way. So I want to make sure that text is right side up. The paper will probably cover it, but we're actually going to use the same paper on the inside, which didn't think about it. Oh, we're not. We're using something else. We're using something else. I was going to say because you don't really want to do that. So that really makes it difficult because the pattern. The main thing is the top and the bottom being inked. Now we're going to glue it in and then we're going to jump to something else. Now this is the spine, so we want to make sure to get a lot of glue on it once again. We don't want it to bubble up, that's for sure, where the fold is. We want to get that piece of glue off there. And we want to make sure we get the center really well. As 
what you don't want is where the um, where you made the indentations where it folds for the spine. You don't want that to bubble up. Okay, let's turn this over. Let's get our cover. Now, we want to get it even top and bottom and even left and right. Before it totally dries, while it's still kind of damp, you're going to want to go, boy, I always get this wrong. Here it is. Go up and down that whole area. Should have put some glue in between where that seam is. I should have put some glue on the inside, the cream colored paper. Hopefully it'll be all right. I can hear it crackling, so I think it's getting down in there. And I'm just burnishing it. But you definitely want to make sure this part right here stays stuck when you fold it. We're not going to fold it because we're going to, we're not done papering, and it's much easier to paper if it hasn't been folded yet. You can try it though and see. See, I have a bubble right there. Darn it. This is becoming the not so friendly cover, isn't it? Let's see if I fixed it. Almost way better than it was. I can't get any more glue under there than is there. You can still hear it kind of crackling. Yep, my design team must have started texting each other or messaging each other. So the inside covers we are going to cut, which is going to be this, which I think is a spiffy inside cover. All we have to do for that is cut this in half. Hmm. Just a smidge off that. 
I don't know what's wrong with my printer. There we go. Now, so if this is eight and a half by eleven, then five and a half will be the center because I printed it borderless. So five and a half. be my center okay so we're not going to glue them in but they're going to go like this how can eight and a half not be eight and a half in bizarro world We're going to make stuff on these two things. So we're going to set this aside for now. Somewhere. And we're going to work on these. So on one, we're just going to put a gusseted pocket. On the other, we're going to put an expandable pocket. But first... First, we need to um, make the booklet that's going to go in the pocket. So let's make sure it's going to fit on the page. It's our final file folder. Hmm. And I haven't put the glossy accent on it yet. Look at that. It's not going to fit. Unless I put it this way, which I really don't want to do, and then it'll stick out. This is really tall. Let me take a little bit off of there. That should work. it. And I'll put the um, triple thick on here. I think I didn't think I was going to use it, so I didn't do it. Got the word um, spring 
set aside to put on here. And we have our eyelash trim to put around the word. I just printed out the um, the ephemera and then I just put this paper on the back and I just happened to get lucky that some flowers showed up along the edge. Okay, now we need to I think I want to make the, um, the actual booklet first. So we're going to have to cut the papers so that they'll fit. I need some coffee dyed paper here. And I'm going to push this up a little bit so that they're just a smidge shorter. And then I'm going to mark them just a smidge shorter. And then I'm going to use this flat side, not the tab, to mark the width. And then we'll cut them just a little bit narrower, okay? And that means we're going to have to cut the bottom off first, or we're going to cut the width off. I coffee dyed these by spraying them. I can only do 10 at a time. I have to lay them out on the floor. Keep moving this piece of paper around. It's going to be the pocket. I'm going by this corner here. Sorry, I was probably off camera. Alright, that looks about right. So now we're going to fold them in half. Actually, we're going to ink them. doesn't take very long to do these. It's just typing paper. This will give us a nice little notebook. Well, we couldn't have inked it ahead of time anyway because we had to cut the top and the bottom. I mean, the height and the sides, the width. 
so we would have just cut any inking off anyway. But we inked, goodness, we inked the coffee dyed paper inside the journal. So that's why we're doing it in the notebook as well. the side I already inked. It's kind of hard to tell because the edge of this kind of flops over. And you can kind of end up getting both. And then we'll fold them in half. And then we'll sew them in with my green floss, my light green, summery grass green floss. We're close enough. It's going to just staple it in, but I thought, well, if we sewed it in, it would look nicer. I'm going to have to grab my needle. Got my thread out, but not my needle. This is a We Are Memory Keepers pokey tool, and it's made for um, brads, and then this splits the things open and flattens them onto the thing. I find doing it by hand easier, but it's a nice sized pokey tool on this end, and it's got a nice grip on it, and it doesn't roll around. All right, let's fold them in half. to ink the spine. Which you could have done after we'd sewn it, but it wouldn't have been near as easy. Okay. That'll give us a 12-page little journal. Ugh. This paper is kind of crooked. I forgot to ink the spines on these. And I don't mind if they're a little different sizes and whatever.
Now, before you sew this in, you can stencil on the pages. Um, maybe we could. Oh, I didn't forget to ink the spines. I hadn't folded them yet. So if I cut one crooked, they're probably all going to be crooked. Yep. This is uh, Notebook Making 101 on how not to do it. I cut the papers together, which should be all right. But it tends to slip when I do it. page or each little section we will do a tree okay we're at an hour so um I'm going to let you go for this video. When we come back, I'll have these stenciled. We'll sew them in. Uh, we'll do the pocket. We'll do the inside front pocket. And then um, and then we'll start um, doing the actual uh, cover itself. Okay? All right. I'll see you next time. That will be just a second for you and a day for me. Okay. Bye-bye.